Hello, my name is Lauren Wolk and I'm the author of Wolf Hollow and Beyond the Bright Sea and my new book Echo Mountain. Uh, it's the story of a girl named Ellie. She's 12 years old and she and her family live in Maine um, during the Great Depression which forces them to leave the town where they've always lived and move into the mountains to start a new life in the wilderness. It's a very difficult life but Ellie rises to the occasion and proves that she is tough and resilient and brave and smart and equal to the task of starting this new life. Uh, in fact, she loves it. I'm going to read you a little passage here. Uh, it's pretty close to the beginning of the book that says in her own words how she feels about that. Like my father, I loved the woods. From the start, the two of us were happy with our unmapped life, the constant brightness of the birds, the moon beautiful in its bruises, the breeze that set the trees shimmering in the sun, fresh and joyful, and the work we did together to build ourselves a home. For every difficulty, there had been some kind of good work we could do, so we had done it. But this bond with my father and the wilderness itself made a rift between me and my mother, and my sister especially, who both seemed to think I had somehow betrayed them by being happy when they were not. Nothing about life on Echo Mountain was harder for me than that rift. The idea that I should be sorry for being different. And I made up my mind early on that I might miss my mother, miss my sister, and be lonely, but I would not be sorry for what set me apart. I loved the mountain, and I loved what it kindled in me, and that was that. But it wasn't easy. Ellie goes on to face some real challenges, in fact, some really terrifying disasters. Um, but she does, and she does that with the help of a, a hag named Kate, and a boy named Larkin, and a dog named Captain, and another one named Quiet, who's just a new puppy, and her little brother Samuel, and Mother Nature. Um, quite a cast of characters, but it is Ellie who carries the day. And now I'd like to talk to you for a minute or two about some of the aspects of writing that I love most, and which you might enjoy. One of the things I always try to remember as I'm writing is that it's important to show rather than telling too much. If you tell too much you don't give the reader important work to do and and a book is always a partnership between the writer and the reader. They bro both bring something to the experience. So showing rather than telling gives the reader something to do. It also gives the writer plenty to do. It's a lot harder but a lot more satisfying to show, to paint a picture, instead of just hammering someone over the head with something and spelling it out. So um, practicing the techniques of, of showing and being subtle, that's, that's something I do as much as I possibly can. And while we're all at home alone during this pandemic, I thought it was maybe something you might want to practice too. So I want to read you just a, a little tiny passage um, from Echo Mountain in which uh, Ellie, the main character, describes uh, a boy she meets, a boy named Larkin. She says, he was about my age, but a little older and a fair bit taller, thin, winter pale, with hair as thick and black as a bear's. His clothes were ragged, many times patched. His hands were covered with scratches, as if he'd been handling wild kittens, and his bootlaces bristled with burrs. Even from across the room, just looking at this boy, I hurt all over. Now, Ellie could have said, he looked like a wild child, like no one was looking after him, like he was poor, like he was sad. Wouldn't have given you much work to do as a reader. And it wouldn't have been much fun for me to write. This was fun to write. So here's my challenge to you while you're home um, in isolation. Take a little of all that time you have and find someone who's in your house with you who'd make a good subject and watch them carefully. Look at the details of how they dress and how they move and, and how they sound. The look in their eyes, little things speak volumes. Spend some time looking at them, listening to them, and then write a little vignette. It can be real short. It might lead to a story. It could be the beginning of a novel, but it will definitely be a character on the page that you have captured there by paying attention to the little things and using them to show instead of telling. I hope you have some fun doing this. I always have fun writing and reading. I hope you do too. Bye-bye.